My name is um, Philip McCrum. I head up the Economic Advisory Unit uh, for EY across MENA. Uh, and as uh, Matthew mentioned, I'm, what I'm going to do in the next 20 minutes or so um, is really to, to, to set the scene and to provide a little bit of wider context for uh, the discussions uh, that we're all going to have um, here today. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to look a little bit of, uh, into the, uh, the Saudi macro environment uh, because there have certainly been some changes there and I think they're worthwhile uh, dwelling upon for, for, for a while. Um, but of course uh, I will also um, look at the, the M&A market and I will, I will draw out some, um, some findings from our, from our Capital Confidence Barometer Survey. Uh, and that survey um, gauges corporate confidence uh, both in the economic outlook uh, and also uh, boardroom trends and practices in managing um, capital. Uh, now, obviously, when uh, when we talk about uh, when we talk about context, um, we can't really avoid talking about uh, the oil price. Now, uh, you probably don't need reminding, or maybe you don't want to be uh, reminded, um, that over the past uh, few months or, or, or the earlier part of this year, uh, we saw a drop in the oil price um, of of 56 percent. Um, I think it's quite useful actually just to, to dwell on this a minute, even just to, to sort of um, allow you to visualize it, it graphically because it is quite a, uh, a, um, uh, an interesting uh, graphic to display. Um, this drop in the oil price has really dramatically changed uh, the macro outlook and the macro environment, um, not just here, uh, but it also has done uh, globally. And it's also changed um, all the business assumptions uh, that we make uh, every day. Uh, I, th I think what's also quite interesting is that um, from the graph you'll see that this is the, the, the second major oil shock um, that the region and indeed the global uh, economy has, has experienced over the past six years. Um, but as, but as, as is evident, um, the first shock came after uh, five years of, of gradually rising oil prices. And there was a growing expectation over that time um, that there was a bubble in the making. Now, if you can see from the, from the uh, uh, second oil shock, uh, that came after three years of relatively stable oil prices and, and, and obviously record high oil prices. Um, and in a sense, that had, mark, uh, that had lulled some of the market into a full sense of security. Uh, and so that shock, that fiscal shock, that, that oil price shock um, has been probably even more acute, I would argue, uh, than it was uh, six years ago. And so where we're at now um, is that we have uh, landed in an area which all market analysts call uh, the new normal. Um, it would seem, and I'm not going to get into to arguments about you know, oil price forecasts, um, but it would seem that uh, there is a, a price brand uh, for oil going forward, at least in the, in the short to medium term, of somewhere between uh, 40 and $70 uh, a barrel. And that obviously has, has huge implications uh, for oil exporters uh, and for those of us who do business uh, in this in this region uh, and, and saying that I mean that is reflected uh, indeed in in some of the out, some of the output from our from our survey uh, and it has showed that the oil price drop has quite clearly focused at the minds of corporate executives um, oil market dynamics and related currency uh, volatility are now right at the top um, of the boardroom agenda, both at a global level um, and a Saudi level. Uh, and, and that shift has also uh, sharpened focus on uh, reducing costs uh, and protecting margins. And that is the number two concern of all C-suite executives that we, that we talk to. Um, but I think perhaps encouragingly, um, if you do look at the, the, the right-hand uh, side of the graph this, from Saudi respondents, 11% um, of Saudi respondents uh, are still in an acquisitive uh, mood. Our survey also shows um, that um, despite the, the wider global macro uncertainty, um, there is a, a certain degree of growing confidence 
um, in an improving macroeconomic outlook. Um, and so as you can see by looking at the, the right-hand pie chart for October 15, the latest um, survey, 83% of global respondents um, believe that the global economy uh, is either strongly or modestly improving. Um, and more than the third think that it is strongly improving. And that's three times uh, the number of, uh, uh, of respondents since last year. Um, I just want to add a, a, a very quick caveat to this. Um, this is a, an October dated report, but the survey was carried out um, in sort of late August, September. So um, it doesn't necessarily capture uh, changes in the environment since, since then. Um, I think that, that relative optimism um, is also translated into strong corporate uh, indicators uh, and market sentiment at the global level. Uh, and so there we can see that 70% um, of, of global respondents uh, said that their earnings uh, were improving. 71% uh, said that they were confident about market stability. 73% uh, were bullish about access uh, to credit. Um, slightly fewer, uh, but still a majority, 54%, um, said that equity valuations uh, were improving. And looking more broadly to the, to the, 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 the global uh, M&A field, um, I think this confidence is, is reflected in, in um, the growth in global M&A values. Those values are reflected in the, in the gray column. Um, and those, as you can see, have, have picked up um, fairly strongly over the past year. Now, volumes, um, as depicted by the um, yellow line, uh, have stayed relatively flat, um, but that suggests uh, that deals are perhaps getting, getting bigger. And so what the survey shows is that global M&A um, is going to remain firm in the face of uh, short-term market volatility. So if we look uh, more specifically to, to Saudi, what, what, are, what are Saudi executives um, saying about all this? Um, well, as you can see um, from, from our October survey, uh, October 2015 survey, Saudi executives are also uh, fairly bullish on the global economy. Half of them see it uh, as strongly improving, and that's up from a third um, the same time last year in 2014 uh, and less than a quarter uh, six months ago. Um, let's not forget that uh, in April earlier this year, um, that was the time when perhaps reali uh, the realization had sunk in that the oil price uh, wasn't going to rebound, um, and that was perpetuating and fueling continued uh, uncertainty in, in the wider market. Um, but, but since then, that confidence has managed to rebound, and there's a, I think there's a general belief in the underlying resilience of key global markets. When um, Saudi executives look uh, closer to home, when they look at their own um, market uh, and their own economy, um, they're perhaps a little bit uh, more circumspect. Um, as we can see um, from the October 2014 survey, so this time last year on, on the left, um, that was taken before the price of oil dropped. The, the, the survey was run. So, so at that point in time, uh, most Saudis or half of Saudi executives were, were, were very, very uh, confident about the outlook for the Saudi economy, um, and a thir further third uh, were, were modestly confident about uh, the, the economy's Im improvement. Um, in April 2015, um, once the oil price had, had uh, really slumped, um, uh, as you can see, the results of that confidence, um, is, it, it retreated fairly significantly. Um, but now, um, back to looking where we are now, executives are once again uh, increasingly confident um, that the Saudi economy can grow within this uh, new normal oil price era. And, and two-thirds of, of Saudi executives see the, econ the Saudi economy uh, as strongly or modestly improving. So, in a sense, that, that begs a, a question. Um, are uh, Saudi executives uh, right to be confident? Um, what exactly are the realities of the Saudi economy uh, today? Um, when I 
look at, for the purposes of today, I think when I look at the Saudi economy, what I'm going to do is look at the, 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 the fiscal account. I think that the fiscal account is a fairly good uh, bellwether of the, the Saudi economy, um, mainly because public consumption really does drive growth right across the, right across the economy. And of course, 90% uh, of, of uh, government revenues come from, come from oil. Um, as you can see from the graph, um, ever since 2000 and up to uh, 2014, um, Saudi total government expenditure in Saudi Arabia has risen by unprecedented levels. It has risen by a factor of five over that 14-year period. But also, if you look quite closely, that, that expenditure is, is, uh, is broken down by, by current expenditure and capital expenditure, capital in, in yellow. Back in 2000, um, capital expenditure made up just 7% of total um, government uh, spending. Last year, it made up 33%. And that, to me, is a really positive um, indicator of the government's efforts at uh, diversification um, and laying down the foundations uh, for future growth in the Saudi economy. Um, but we can't avoid the fact that um, current expenditure has also risen uh, very, very strongly as well and also actually takes up uh, the, bulk of, uh, the bulk of public sector outlays. Um, and of course, current spending is made up of mainly wages uh, and subsidies. And when it comes to um, consolidating the fiscal accounts, it's actually very, very difficult um, to, to reduce wages uh, and to reduce uh, those subsidies. Um, so what we're going to see when, when the fiscal position becomes a little bit tighter over the, over the coming few months and coming few years, um, really there's, there's only one immediate option uh, for the government, and that is uh, to reduce capital spending. Um, and so therefore, uh, the, the, the lighter colors on the right-hand side of the graph signify the forecast from, from now on in. Um, and you can see we're going to get a correction, a slight correction, um, in fiscal outlays uh, in 2016, uh, especially in, on, on the capital expenditure. Um, but we do anticipate, and the market does anticipate, um, continued um, expenditure growth from there on in um, as, the, as the government looks uh, to, to, to meet the kingdom's socioeconomic needs. The, the problem is um, that these unprecedented levels of spending uh, means that Saudi Arabia has increased its reliance on expensive oil. Um, and according to the IMF, um, its, its fiscal break-even prices uh, show that Saudi today, this year, needs oil at $105 a barrel uh, to balance its budget. And that's a long way off um, the current price of $44 a barrel. It's going to have to start thinking about um, what it does with its, uh, with its expenditure patterns. Um, but as this graph shows, uh, the government actually hasn't cut spending uh, since 2002. Um, spending in this year's budget um, grew by 0.5%. Um, and, and I think particularly in the, um, in the aftermath of the oil price crash, um, uh, it was a very, very uh, significant uh, statement by the Saudi government um, and demonstrated its belief in uh, its ability to weather the impact of that uh, oil price drop and also, and perhaps more importantly, um, its continued commitment um, to its spending plans. Um, but with average oil price growth of 11% over the preceding decade or so uh, every year in, in the budgeted, uh, budgeted expenditure, um, that would seem to me to be uh, unsustainable. Uh, the, the problem is, um, is that we don't actually know how much um, the government will spend uh, next, next year. Um, because uh, what this graph shows is, is the government's actual expenditure over the historical period against its budgeted expenditure. Uh, the budgeted expenditure is in grey and the actual in, in yellow. Um, and it actually, it's, it's overspent on its budget by about 14% uh, 
uh, every year, quite consistently. Um, and as you can see, in the last two years, um, what we've, although the budget has remained largely flat this year, um, we, we are going to get uh, an actual reduction in, in actual expenditure, even though we'll get an overspend against that budget. And this, this um, unprecedented level of, of spending, I think, comes, comes at a price. And, and, and this graph you know, clearly shows uh, the price that uh, the Saudi government is now going to have to, to pay. Um, it recorded a small fiscal deficit uh, last year. Um, this year, that deficit will balloon to 17% of, of GDP. Now, what that represents um, is a significant structural shift in the management of the public accounts. Um, and it means uh, that the government can no longer put off some very, very difficult decisions uh, that it's going to have to make. And just to put that into perspective, the drop in the oil price over the past year uh, will cost uh, the Saudi government $140 billion in lost revenue. There is, um, there is some good news, though, um, and I'd like to focus on that. Um, during this period of, of very, very high unprecedented oil prices, um, the government uh, managed uh, to pay down its debt. Uh, back in 2000, debt was all, public debt was almost up at about 100% of GDP, um, and today it stands at less than 2%. It also bolstered its uh, reserves, and it's now got, uh, you know, the reserves, or last, at the end of last year, its reserves were, were some of the largest in the world at $750 billion. So what Saudi has is a very, very uh, comfortable cash cushion with which to manage uh, the crisis or, 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 the, or the more difficult period uh, that we're now going to, to move into. Um, and it will use that cash cushion uh, to support it. We've already seen that the Saudi government has uh, drawn down on its reserves. Um, between August last year, over the, in fact, over the course of the last year, it's drawn down perhaps about 70 billion of those reserves. Um, and we've also seen that it started to tap um, the domestic markets for, uh, for debt. Um, and soon it will start looking uh, globally uh, for, for debt as well. And so as you can see in the forecast period, we'll see a, a, a reduction in, in reserves uh, and a pickup in debt. Uh, but that will, that will help, that will see Saudi through for, for, for quite a number of, of years. Um, so, so that will help um, actually uh, Saudi maintain a, a decent growth momentum over the, the, the forecast period over the next few years. Um, we saw, with, with unprecedented levels of spending, we saw really his unprecedented levels of growth uh, in Saudi Arabia. Av average growth over the past decade has been about 4.6 to, to, to 5%. Uh, we won't see those levels again over the next four to five years, um, but we'll see um, growth of about between 3 and 3.5%, which I think is, is pretty solid uh, and, and pretty encouraging, particularly in, in the given, uh, given environment. Uh, and, and I think that, that what that means is that you know, Saudi, Saudi executives' cautious uh, optimism uh, on, the, on the Saudi economy is, a, is about right. Now, given this, this, this slowdown in growth, um, both um, global and Saudi executives, according to the, the, the survey we've just carried out, um, they will now focus on uh, more on cost reduction and efficiencies rather than, than going for growth. And as you can see from the right hand uh, sort of side of the graph, um, there's a clear trend in the Saudi market uh, over the past year of that shift um, from, from seeking out growth um, to becoming more efficient. So last year, October last year, two thirds of Saudi executives uh, said they were, they were looking at growth and that, that trend has pretty much uh, reversed uh, now. Um, and, and that said, I think that there's, there's still, and, and again our, our, our survey shows that, that there is still a strong uh, appetite uh, for deals. Um, looking at the, the graph on the left, 
that shows that 50% uh, of Saudi executives and 59% of global executives expect to pursue an acquisition this year. Um, and while uh, Saudi executives are, are confident uh, that they will close those deals, and, and the graph on the right shows that 64% of those Saudi executives believe that they will close deals, um, they're now much more interested in, in the quality of the deal rather than the number of them. And, and Saudi respondents uh, are also very confident uh, that the deal pipeline uh, will grow over the, the next year. And that, and that, as you can see, if you compare the two graphs, is in stark contrast to global respondents uh, who mostly see no change uh, in that deal pipeline. So as, as far as drivers of those deals are concerned, 44% um, of Saudi respondents um, say they are going to remain focused on existing markets, the markets that they know and feel comfortable with, and, and for the most part, uh, they lie within the MENA region and particularly the Gulf. Um, and what they're going to do is try and look to gain market share uh, in, in, those, in those markets. Um, but deal decisions, looking further down the graph, deal decisions will also be driven by a desire to reduce costs, that comes up again, um, and also to, to find and buy in, in talent. So um, just uh, in conclusion, uh, what I think I can say is, is that um, yes, there has been a marked uh, shift in the macro outlook, um, but I think that um, Saudi's strong uh, financial buffers will continue to support growth in the short to medium term. Um, and while um, executive confidence and optimism has perhaps been slightly tempered over the, the past year or so, uh, the deals market, as our survey clearly shows, uh, is expected to hold up. I hope that sets the scene sufficiently for you. Thank you.